Hello, in this video we'll see some of the new features that will arrive to Shopify in the future. All of the features I'll be mentioning here have already been announced by Shopify but at the time of recording have not released date yet. However, some of them can already be tried out either through an early access list or through a developer preview in a development store. The moment any of those features are released, they'll show either here in the Shopify changelog or in the developer changelog, so keep an eye on those pages to know as soon as these features become available. With that being said, let's go through the features. The first one of those features is Flex Sections. It was announced in Shopify Edition summer of 2023 and the only thing we have so far is this short demo video in the announcement. However, we can already infer a few things from it, such as the ability to resize and reorder individual elements or group of elements with much more control than what we currently have through sections and section blocks. Without this feature, to be able to, be, to give the merchants such flexibility for any element in a section, we'll have to create a pretty complex section schema so this will be a helpful addition to the platform. We can also see here that it is leveraging on CSS Flexbox to achieve this, which is great news because it means that you will need to install some complex third-party library or tool to get this to work and will most likely be able to integrate it to your existing Shopify team with this. If you want to try this feature out, you can try signing on for the waitlist here to get early access. I'll leave this link in the video description. Just note that signing up for this doesn't ensure you'll get access, so keep your expectations in check with that. Next we have Shopify Subscriptions app, also announced in Shopify Edition Summer of 2023. This will be a free app, as mentioned over here, that will let you manage subscriptions for your store. This app should cover for some of the most basic subscription use cases, such as creating a monthly subscription for a product and offering some discount if the customer purchases it that way but some of the most complex scenarios will still need either a custom build solution or a third-party app, as mentioned over here. They have a short video here where they demo the app a little, which I'll link in the video description, but let's quickly go through some of the most interesting details. If we zoom in on this demo, we can see here on the left, right below apps, that we see subscriptions. This is the app itself, and here we have three tabs, plans, contracts, and settings. The Plans tab is selected, so this is what we have over here in the center, and we are creating a subscriptions plan. Here we can enter the plans title, which is only for identification purposes, the customer will not see this, and this, this purchase option title is what the customer will see. So in this case it is named subscribe and save, and then over here we have a search box for finding the products that will be included in this plan, and then the type of discount that we are offering here. We have, at least at the time of recording this demo, only three, percentage of, amount of, or a flat rate. Now with the product selected over here, we are able to create different options for the customer on how often they want this product to be delivered. In this case, we have created two. Either deliver it every six weeks, giving the customer a 15% discount, or deliver it every four weeks or one month, giving the customer a 20% discount. We are able to add more options, as we still have this Add Option button, which appears to be enabled, and after we are done, we can click here on Save to have this plan shown in our store. And this is how the customer will see this. So here they have one-time purchase for the regular purchase option of just paying once for the item and getting it one time, or subscribe and save over here to get the item delivered either every six weeks or every month. It says here subscribe and save because in the previous step we saw how that was the name given to this um, subscription option and then we have delivered every six or one month because those were the two options selected when creating the selling plan. It also looks this way because this is part of the team but you can customize this to look differently through CSS. And like flex sections at the moment, we can only access this by requesting early access through this form over here. I'll be linking this in the video description, so you can fill the form for yourself if you're interested, but keep in mind that this doesn't ensure you'll get access to it. Next, we have APIs to support more than 100 product variants. If you've worked with complex stores before, you've probably have hit the limit of only 100 variants per product. Up until now, there hasn't been a straightforward way around this, and instead we either had to accommodate the store's catalog to fit into this constraint, or rely on third-party apps which were doing some maneuvers behind the scenes, such as creating variants on the fly, to make this all work. And just as a reminder, 
a hundred variants doesn't mean a hundred options. You can hit a hundred variants with far fewer options than that. So for example, let's say that we have a t-shirt product over here and that I have options for the color. I have 20 available colors here and for the size with a small, medium and large. Then let's say that I want to add options for the material as well. So let's give this option the values of material one and material two over here. We see already here a warning that you can have more than 100 variants per product. So to save this product, I'm asked to remove some options. And this is because we have here 20 options for the color, but each color has to be available in each one of these sizes, so small, medium and large. This already creates 60 variants. And then if we also have to make each one of these 60 variants available with material 1 and material 2, this creates 120 variants, which goes above the limit. With this API change that Shopify will be introducing soon, they give us options to go above this limit, which previously were non-existent or very hacky. And even though you cannot try this out yet, you can fill this form, which I'll leave in the video description, to get more updates and information on this upcoming developer preview. And talking about developer previews, the next few features we'll see are all available in developer preview. What this means is that you can start already playing with them in a development store. To create a store that has them enabled, you can go to your Shopify par Partners dashboard over here and click on Add Store. Then create a development store. And here, select this option, Create a Store to Test and Build. Then click on Developer Preview here. And from this dropdown, select the developer preview that you want to start testing and create this store with that. The first one of these features in Developer Preview that we'll see is Admin Blocks. These are custom UI blocks that we can add in different points throughout the Shopify Admin. And they can be used to show contextual information, but also to create interactive elements. In this example, we are seeing that this Shop Codes app have created this block over here that lets the merchant interact directly with the app from the product page. So here you can see that products is selected, the merchant is in the admin product page for one of these products, and they can see the different shop codes that have been created for them. They can interact with them through these actions, or they can create another shop code and associate it with this product immediately without having to do a context switch and go to the app, find the product, and so on. The process shares a lot of similarities with creating an admin action, for which I have a video in the channel, but nonetheless, I'll also be creating a video for admin blogs once they go out of developer preview and become generally available. Finally, we have customer accounts UI extensions, which let us add custom UI elements in the new customer account page. And just as a refresher, the page I'm talking about is this one over here. So this is the new customer account page, in case you weren't familiar with it. They follow the same idea of checkout UI extensions, for which there is already a video in the channel. Basically, you will select your extension target point, which is where your extension's content will be rendered, and then by using the extension's UI components provided by Shopify, you will build your UI. These are the components that you have available. Some examples given over here in the documentation for it will be building a section to show the loyalty points earned by the customer, or building an extension to create a new page that lets the customer manage their wish list. And just like with admin blocks, once these go out of developer preview, I'll be making a video on them in the channel. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful or informative, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify related content, and I'll see you all in the next video.